بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الدعاء والسلاء المؤمن دعاء زي وبن فوي بليو يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله Oh mankind, oh humanity, all of you are beggars in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu huwa al-ghani yul-hamid. Alam ibn Kathir explains, Allah is showing and displaying his independence. Allah does need nothing from the creation. And the creation needs everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you need to submit yourself and be humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hum muhtajuna ilayhi fi jami'il harakat wa sakanat. You need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every movement, in every aspect of your life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is solely independent. That's why he says, huwa al-ghani. Allah himself is independent. So we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs. As the shayr says, لا تسألن بني آدم حاجة If you have to ask, don't ask the creation. وَسَلِ الَّذِي أَبْوَابُهُ لَا تُحْجَبُهُ Ask the one whose doors do not close, whose doors are open, perpetually open and ready to accept you with open arms. اللَّهُ يَغْضَبُ إِنْ تَرَكْتَ سُؤَالَهُ The creation as such that when you ask them وَبُنَيَّ آدَمَ حِينَ يُسْأَلُ يَغْضَبُ They will get angry, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry when you leave asking him. So man you ask, ask, he will give you, even with a mother, they will get tired of giving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not get tired of giving. Hazrat Abu Huraira says, I've seen in Hazrat Ala bin Hadrami three qualities, I had not seen anybody like that. Min ahadin qabl wa la ba'd. Kunna fi safarin, we were traveling one day, and there was a need for water. So, he was special where he made three du'as and fastajab Allah lawfihin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted all three of his adiyya. So there was a need for water, he made du'a Allah ma ya alimu ya hakimu ya aliyu ya adhimu inna abiduk fi sabilik nuqatil aduwak O Allah in your path provide for us water and when we leave this place then فَلَا تَجْعَلْ لِأَحَدٍ فِي نَصِيبًا O Allah, don't leave a share or portion for anybody else. The water should only be for us. So Sahaba explained that it rained, we fulfilled our needs, we filled our containers and then we left. So the Rawi says that I want to see how much of his dua was accepted. لَأَنْذُرَنَّا هَلْ Was his dua accepted? And I went back and I told my companions after about a, a mile or so distance, I left my container there. I went there to investigate. As if it never rained. As if it never rained. Because he said, Allah, don't leave anything else for anyone. And the second one was we were in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The enemy was in front of us and there was a need and he made dua. Allahumma ya alimu ya halimu ya aliyu ya adhimu inna abiduk fi sabilik nuqatil aduwak faj'al lana sabilan ila aduwik. O Allah, open a way through your enemy. So Sahaba traveled over the water and the water did not even touch the hooves of the animals. And the last the situation was, فَلَمَّا رَجَعَنَا When we were returning, he had some illness on his stomach. So, in that illness, he passed away. So we searched for water, we could not find for any water, so we buried him in his clothing, and we left, and then we found some water. So we said, let's go back and wash him. So, فَرَجَعَنَا فَطَلَبْنَا قَبْرَهُ We dug his grave. And uh, we did not find the body on there because he made dua that, Oh Allah, Ya Alimu, Ya Halimu, Ya Adhimu, Ya Allah, hide my body, conceal my body so that nobody will be ever privy to my aura, my satr, my private parts. And his body was gone. 
So Sahaba fulfill their needs and requirements to Allah subhanahu wa at any given time. And there are certain amal and precautions that we need to take to make sure that our dua is accepted also. And we are beggars to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as you go in front of Allah, like you are a beggar, that you are in need, not that you are independent, but that you are dependent with humbleness and submission and fully fulfilling the criteria. Then like how the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam's idea were accepted, we have great chance that our dua will also be accepted. Speaking about beggars, the wife told her husband, I hate that beggar. He said, why? What has happened? She said, yesterday I gave him food. Today he gave me a book. So her husband said, that's good. She said, no, he gave me a book on how to cook. A book on how to cook. So the beggar got a sign, I'm a good listener. My mother told me to wait here 10 years ago. Somebody else had a sign, my ex-wife had a better lawyer. So we are all beggars. Is a wealthy man had a, uh, a homeless person coming to his door begging and asking for money. So this person had a lot of wealth. So he said, okay, I might as well just help him out, but with a condition. So he told the beggar that it's healthy for you to work for your money and stop begging. So the beggar said, sure, I don't mind working. So the man said, okay, I've got a porch at the back of the house, which needs painting. All the supplies are in the garage. If you paint the porch, I'll give you a hundred dollars. The homeless man agreed. The beggar goes back to the house. He comes back four, later, four hours later to the front of the house and rings the doorbell. The man answers and he supplies. He said, are you finished so quickly? How, how well, how, how is it going in the painting of the porch? So the beggar says, it's gone good, I'm complete, I'm done. And by the way, it's not a Porsche, it's a Lamborghini, by the way. It's not a Porsche, it's a Lamborghini. So, antum al ilallah, we should be beggars in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Condition number three among the adab of dua is to implore Allah to beseech, to insist, to be persistent, to request, to submit ourselves. Alidhu biyadhal jalali wal ikram. So we need to be submitting and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-ilhafid dua to be constantly asking Allah even if you have to repeat ourselves كَانَ إِذَا دَعَى دَعَى ثَلَاثًا When the Prophet used to make dua, used to ask three times وَإِذَا سَأَلَ سَأَلَ ثَلَاثًا used to ask three times كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ يُعْجِبُهُ أَنْ يَدْعُوَ ثَلَاثًا وَيَسْتَغْفِرَ ثَلَاثًا So to repeat the dua that you are making again and again and again. كان إذا دعا in some riwayat if you have to ask سبع مرات then even if you have to go four, five, six يا الله forgive me يا الله forgive me يا الله forgive me if we have to repeat it three, five, seven, ten, fifteen, twenty times we need to submit to Allah. Number four we shouldn't be hostile or aggressive show no signs of proudness or arrogance, but rather be humble and submissive and don't be exceeding the limit and surpass the need. So submission. So to be very humble, to be submissive. Addressing the people that uh, be humble and submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْعُونَ أَسَمْ وَلَا غَائِبٌ That you're not calling to somebody who is deaf and who is absent. The one that you are calling to is إِنَّ الَّذِي تَدْعُونَهُ سَمِيعٌ قَرِيبٌ Allah listens attentively and He is close to you. So a time will come in my ummah إِنَّهُ سَيَكُونُ قَوْمٌ يَعْتَدُونَ فِي الدُّعَى they will exceed the limits. And in who say yakunu fi hadi l'umma, a time will come in my umma, qawmun ya'ataduna fi al-tuhur wa dua. They will exceed the limits with regards to cleanliness and dua. So, Alama ibn Taymi rahmatullahi used to say that we are told that they need moderation in dua because in ibadat, even in piety, people have exceeded the limits. Where Nabi Alaihissalam has given laxity and permission, but people excel in zuhud, in abstinence. 
So that is what, what is permissible, they make it haram. And that's as if we are not accepting the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then number five, we shouldn't make dua in rhymed prose, in poetry. So there shouldn't be any uh, rhyming prose, poetry. Number six, we should have yaqeen that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve our problems. Like the riwayat of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا سَتَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ So your attention and your yaqeen should be that only Allah who is qadir will accept our dua at every given need. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرِ إِذَا دَعَهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّ It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will fulfill our needs whenever there is a necessity. So our attention only to Allah because in one riwayat when Nabi alayhi salam said that that call to your one Allah that when you call him فَدَعَوْتَهُ كَشَفَ عَنْكَ No matter what difficulties you are in, when you call Allah, He will remove all your difficulties. وَإِنْ أَضْلَلْتَ بِأَرْضٍ If you are in an area, in a land where it is completely desolate, and you are lost, فَدَعَوْتَهُ And you call to Allah, رَدَّ عَلَيْكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return to you. وَالَّذِي إِنْ أَصَابَتْكَ And if any plague, any drought, any plague, comes to you and you call Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve all your issues. So when calling, when making dua, then we should have this yaqeen that only Allah should solve and will solve our problems. Wahabi Munabi used to say, Tara'atu fil kitab al awwal, I read in the previous books, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever holds steadfast unto me, فَإِنْ كَادَتْهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ وَالْأَرْضِ بِمَنْ فِيهَا If the heavens and the earth and all the creation of the world get together and decide to harm this person فَإِنِّي أَجْعَلُ لَهُ مِنْ بَيْنِ ذَلِكَ مَخْرَجَةً I will find a solution to all your problems and whoever does not hold steadfast and turn to me then I will get the earth to swallow him and wipe him out Number seven, we should not have any doubt but have yaqeen in the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will accept my dua. We should not have shak, doubt that I'm making dua, what's happened to my dua, I'm making dua so long. Even though outwardly it seems like lead, but we should have still no doubt in it. Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabbah When he seen Maryam radiallahu anha with fruits out of season, he, he thought and his attention went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if she's getting provisions out of season, that even though I my age is so, I've aged so much and my wife is barren, but his attention went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why, Rabbi inni zalam tu nafsi. That we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have our conviction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept like Yunus alayhi salatu wa salam in the darkness of the stomach of the fish he turned to Allah فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ so different stories of them, different Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam is front of us وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The people of Iman, the people in grief, the people in stress, we will solve their problems. So like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solved the problems, Quran is filled with it. Ahadith are filled with incidents and stories and qisas. We need to have yaqeen. أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي According to our ظن and guman and thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat us in the riwayat اُدْعُ اللَّهُ وَأَنْتُمْ مُقِنُونَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you have conviction that Allah will accept وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ دُعًا مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِلٍ So make sure that you have this yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that 
my dua will be accepted. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam once had some visitors and he sent to the Azwaj al for some food. Falyam yajid, they didn't find anything. So he said, Allah ma'in yasaluka min fadlik wa rahmatik fa innahu la yamlikuha illa anta. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it such that a, a sheep was gifted to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. So when he received, he said, Hadihi min fadlillah. This is from the fadl and bounties of Allah. Now we're waiting for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was with Abu Bakr radiallahu an in the cave, then he said, O Nabi of Allah, law anna ahadahum nadhara tahta qadamahi labsarana. If they just looked, they'll see us. He said, ma dhannuka ya awak. What is your thoughts? means have high hopes in Allah where we are too. But remember Allah is our third. Then 7.2, don't say anything, oh Allah if you want to, oh Allah if you think so, oh inshallah. No, we shouldn't have guman and dhan. إِذَا دَاهَدُكُمْ فَلَا يَقُولْ أَلَّا مَغْفِرْ لِي إِنْ شِئْتَ Don't say, oh Allah if you want to, if you think so. وَلَكِنْ لِيَعْزِمِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ وَلْيُعَذِّمِ الرَّغْبَةِ That when a person is supplicating, he should have full confidence. And he should persistently, perpetually express and show his desire in this supplication in dua. Why? Because فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَتَعَاذَمُهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَتَعَاذَمُهُ شَيْءٌ أَعْطَاهُ No bounty is too great or too big for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give. So we should not just add words in shaita or Allah if you think so etc. Imam Nawi said that it is makru'i tanzihi to make a dua like that and there's different ahadith to explain it. Ibn Batal used to say that a person should have hope that his dua is accepted and he should not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. فَإِنَّهُ يَدْعُ كَرِيمًا Because you're making dua to a Kareem. Ibn Uyina used to say that uh, a person who is making dua should believe that Allah has accepted his dua because Allah has accepted dua from the worst of creations. When Iblis said, Rabbi, فَأَنذِرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Ya Allah, give me respite al qiyamah So Allah said, فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْذَرِينَ I'm giving you time. I'm giving you time. So that is Iblis, who is the worst of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Iblis. So who are we? Number eight, we shouldn't be negligent and absent-minded. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ دُعَانٍ مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِنٍ لَاهِنٍ Number nine, we should be cautious of the words that we are utilizing when we are making dua as well. So for example, Yusuf alayhi salam said, رَبِّ السِّجْنِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ Ya Allah would prefer when he was in a situation of compromise with the ladies and he made dua in Zulaykha. He said, Ya Allah, the prison is more beloved. So we shouldn't ask for things which may be detrimental to ourselves. When Nabi alayhi salam reciting this ayah said, Rahimullah akhi Yusuf, may Allah have mercy on Yusuf alayhi salam, Halla sallallahu al-afwa wal-afya. You should have rather asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afwa and afya instead of asking the prison. And number two, we shouldn't ask for any punishment in advance. Nabi alayhi salam went to visit a sahabi and he was ill and he said, what did you, what did you say, what do I? He said, I should say, Allah man kunta muaqibati. Oh life, it's better for me and my punishment to come in dunya than fa'ajjilu, send it adab in dunya rather than in akhirah. Subhanahu alayhi wa sallam said, subhanallah, la tutiqu. You don't have the capacity. She said, Allah ma'atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adab al-nar. And also, 9.3, we shouldn't ask for extreme things. Things which beyond Allah min salka al-qas abyad an yameen al-jannah. Did you allow in the end of jannah, I want a white palace on the right side. But you should rather ask Allah jannah and protection from jahannam. The amal for today is that alayka bithuli samd. We should maintain long periods of silence. فَإِنَّهُ مَدْرَضَةٌ لِلشَّيْطَانِ Because it dispels Iblis. وَأُنَّكَ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِ دِينِكَ and it will be a means of assistance with regards to your deen. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.